the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our Lesson 296 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, the original edition, here on October 23rd of 2022. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. You know, yesterday the Holy Spirit looks through me today. And after what he sees, he says, hey, I got something to say. <laughs> The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. The Holy Spirit needs my voice today, that all the world may listen to your voice and hear your word through me. I am resolved to let you speak through me, for I would use no words but yours and have no thoughts which are apart from yours, for only yours are true, and I would be Savior to the world I made. For having damned it, I would set it free, setting it free by forgiving it. I would set it, for having damned it, I would set it free, that I may find escape and hear the word your holy voice will speak to me today. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. We teach today that we would learn and that alone. We teach today what we would learn, and that alone. And so our learning goal becomes an unconflicted one and possible of easy reach and quick accomplishment. <laughs> How gladly does the Holy Spirit come to rescue us from hell when we allow his teaching to persuade the world through us to seek and find the easy path to God. Wow. The easy path to God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Let's go look at our text reading. And we're ready for in chapter 29, section 5, the dr dream rolls. Dream rolls. Do you believe that truth can be but some illusion? Can you believe that truth can be but some illusions? They are dreams because they are not true. Their equal lack of truth becomes the basis for the miracle, which means that you have understood the dreams are dreams and that escape depends not on the dream, but only on awaking. On waking. Could it be some dreams are kept and others wakened from? The choice is not between which dreams to keep, but only if you want to live in dreams or to awaken from them. Thus it is the miracle does not select some dreams to leave untouched by its beneficence. You cannot dream some dreams and wake from some, for you are either sleeping or awake, and dreaming goes with only one of these. <laughs> 26. The dreams you think you like would hold you back as much as those in which the fear is seen. For every dream is but a dream of fear, no matter what the form it seems to take. Wow, listen to that. The dreams you think you like would hold you back as much as those in which the fear is seen. For every dream is but a dream of fear no matter what the form it seems to take. We want to awake so that we can see reality, which is wholly satisfying. For every dream is but a dream of fear, no matter what the form it seems to take. The fear is seen within, without, or both. Or it can be disguised in pleasant forms but never is it absent from the dream. For fear is the material of dreams from which they all are made. Their form can change, but they cannot be made of something else. You know, that, that sentence, one back, 
uh, where it says, um, the fear is seen within, without, or both, or it can be disguised in pleasant forms, but never is it absent from the dream, for fear is the material of dreams from which they all are made. Isn't that something? Their form can change, but they cannot be made of something else. The miracle were treacherous indeed if it allowed you still to be afraid because you did not recognize the fear. You would not then be willing to awake, for which the miracle prepares the way. 27. The simplest form it can be said, the simplest form it can be said, attack is a response to function unfulfilled as you perceive the function. In simplest form, it can be said, attack is a response to function unfulfilled as you perceive the function. Let's get that one again. I want to make Let's make sure we get this sentence. In simplest form, it can be said, attack is a response to function unfulfilled as you perceive the function. So if you're going to attack someone, it's because they didn't do what you thought they ought to do. It can be in you or someone else. Okay, you can attack yourself too, can't you? You didn't do what you thought you should do. It can be in you or someone else, but where it is perceived, it will be there, it is attacked. Depression or assault must be the theme of every dream, for they are made of fear. The thin disguise of pleasure and of joy in which they may be wrapped, but slightly veils the heavy lump of fear, which is their core. And it is this the miracle perceives, and not the wrappings in which it is bound. 28. When you are angry, it is not because someone has failed to fill the function. Oh, excuse me. When you are angry, is it not because someone has failed to fill the function you allotted him? You know, you attack after you get angry. And it's because they didn't do what you thought they ought to do. When you are angry, is it not because someone has failed to fill the function you allotted him? You dreamed a dream of how you thought he should be instead of just accepting things as they are. And he didn't fulfill his part. <laughs> when you are angry, is it not because someone has failed to fill the function you allotted him? And does not this become the reason you attack, that your attack is justified? The dream you think you like are those in which the functions you have given have been filled. The needs which you ascribe to you are met. It does not matter if they, are, if they be fulfilled or merely wanted. It is the idea that they exist from which the fears arise. Isn't that something? It does not matter if they be fulfilled or merely wanted. It is the idea that they exist from which the fear arises. Dreams are not wanted more or less. They are desired or not. And each one represents some function which you have assigned, some goal which an event or body or a thing should represent and should achieve for you. If it succeeds, you think you like the dream. If it should fail, you think the dream is sad. But whether it succeeds or fails is not its core, but just the flimsy covering. 29. How happy would your dreams become if you were not the one who gave the, in quotes, proper role to every figure which the dream contains. You know, just quit putting expectations on, on yourself and people. Just let things be. 
how happy would your dreams become? Now, these are the happy dreams of forgiveness will give you, which will start bringing into focus the real world. How happy would your dreams become if you were not the one who gave the proper role in every figure which the dream contains? No one can fail but your idea of him. And there is no betrayal but of this. Thinking that's something no one can fail except your idea of him. You know, you can't fail unless you've decided that you failed. Well, that's just an idea you put on yourself. Same thing about anybody else. They can't fail. You, how do you know what, what, how God's leading them? The things that you thought were a terrible thing might be the very thing that they needed to get to the next step in their walk to God. How happy would your dreams become if you were not the one who gave the proper role to every figure which the dream contains? No one can fail but your idea of him, and there is no betrayal but of this. The, the core of dreams the Holy Spirit gives is never one of fear. The coverings may not appear to change, but what they mean has changed because they cover something else. Perceptions are determined by their purpose in that they seem to be what they are for. A shadow figure who attacks becomes a brother giving you a chance to help if this becomes the function of the dream. And dreams of sadness thus are turned to joy. A shadow figure who attacks, becomes a brother giving you a chance to help if this becomes the function of the dream. And dreams of sadness thus are turned to joy. <laughs> In the last paragraph 30, what is your brother for? You do not know because your function is obscure to you. Do not ascribe a role to him which you imagine would bring happiness to you. Do not ascribe a role to him, which you imagine would bring happiness to you. <laughs> wow, would we ever be free from anger when we can really do that consistently. Do not ascribe a role to him, which you imagine would bring happiness to you. And do not try to hurt him when he fails to take the part which you assign to him in what you dream your life was meant to be. He asks for help in every dream he has, and you have help to give him. If you see the function of the dream as he perceives its function, and the he's capitalized. So let me read that and we'll put the word Holy Spirit in that sentence. He asks for help in every dream. You're talking about the, 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 your brother that you don't want to put a function on. You want to allow them to to be the way they are, okay? He asks for help in every dream he has. And that's what you always want to see. They're asking for help. You know, even if they're angry, that's a cry for help. He asks for help in every dream he has, and you have help to give him. If you see the function of the dream as the Holy Spirit perceives its function, who can utilize all dreams as means to serve the function given him, the Holy Spirit? Who can utilize all dreams? Okay, so the Holy Spirit. Who can utilize all dreams to serve the function given him? I'm going to read it one more time. I really want this to, I want us to get this. Is what I'm, He asks for help in every dream he has, and you have help. To give him, if you see the function, the dream, oh, the function of the dream as he, the Holy Spirit, perceives its function, who can utilize all dreams as means to serve the function given him, the Holy Spirit. Because he loves the dreamer, not the dream, each dream becomes an offering of love, for at its center is his love for you which lights whatever form it takes with love. Wow.
Isn't that beautiful? Okay, well, let's go back and look at our associated reading and uh, our lesson for today. And before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit more about, uh, which is, what is the real world, by the way? Uh, a little bit more about blackberries. Uh, in that uh, care section, they talk in ediblelandscaping.com, talks about beds. So making a bed, and I, I listed here about seven steps. He had quite a long write-up. It's really nice. You might want to go there and read it yourself. But I just wanted to distill out the basic ideas that he used to, to plan a bed. Uh, keep it close to the kitchen, uh, generally in your yard. So if that's the case, mow on a low blade setting a 10 foot wide times the length of whatever you want your bed. Uh, uh, till two to four inches deep. <laughs> Leaves are falling off the uh, walnut tree above me. Uh, had big freeze here and now they're all dropping off in gangbusters. Okay, till two to four inches deep. You don't have to go deep for, for, for berries. Uh, and you and there, there's ways to do it even without tilling, but I'm going to just tell you what he says. Till two to four inches deep, the middle of, which is a, a five foot bed. So you've mowed 10 foot wide, but you're going to, you're going to now till the middle five foot. I tend to lay cardboard down just stop the grass and not till at all. Uh, four, add two inches of compost or used potting soil, any kind of uh, rich humus material, two inches thick over the tilled area or the cardboard. Then um, what, what Michael at Edible Landscaping used was three inch wide weed cloth on both sides of the the planting bed extending a little bit into the the mowed grass it was laying down low then i but i would recommend just putting a border you know put a border along where the at the five foot bed you know put something in the ground there that's a, a border that keeps the grass from from invading uh, And then after planting, mulch the five foot bed three inches deep. So then plant your berries down the center about every five foot generally. He mentioned heritage raspberries only need to be three foot apart, but uh, blackberries five foot apart. And, and then lastly, he put posts and wire and you could use rails. Uh, I think what he did was put one down the center and then one down the uh, at the edges of the five foot bed and ran that wire. Uh, he might have run run a couple of me. He, he didn't really elaborate. But you know whatever it takes to get those canes to kind of be supported and they don't all have to be supported. And you can and lots of those varieties are uh, you know can, can hold themselves up. So anyway, I thought that was some good advice on, uh, on planting your blackberries, making a bed. What is the real world? Now this is under uh, the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. The real world is a symbol like the rest of what perception offers. Yet it stands for what is opposite to what you made. Your world is seen, seen through eyes of fear and brings the witnesses of terror to your mind. The real world cannot be perceived except through eyes forgiveness blesses. So they see a world where terror is impossible and witnesses to fear cannot be found. The real world holds a counterpart for each unhappy thought reflected in your world a sure correction for the sights of fear and sounds of battle which your world contains. The real world shows a world seen differently, through quiet eyes and with a mind at peace. Nothing but rest is there. There are no cries of pain and sorrow heard. 
for nothing here remains outside forgiveness. And the sights are gentle. Only happy sights and sounds can reach the mind that has forgiven itself. <laughs> Isn't that some only happy sights and sounds can reach the mind that has forgiven itself? Because if something comes to you that's not a happy sight, you forgive it. You let it go. You see, you re return to your freedom. Understand it was an illusion. Don't, don't dwell on it. It might be a little tricky in the beginning as you start practicing this, but it'll become much easier and you'll finally realize, wow, I've got a solution to all my problems. What need has such a mind for thoughts of death, attack, and murder? What can it perceive surrounding it but safety, love, and joy? What is there it would choose to be condemned, and what is there that it would judge against? The world it sees arises from a mind at peace within itself. No danger lurks in anything it sees, for it is kind, and only kindness does it look upon. <laughs> the real world is the symbol that the dream of sin and guilt is over, and God's Son no longer sleeps. His waking eyes perceive the sure reflection of his Father's love, the certain promise that he is redeemed. The real world signifies the end of time, for its perception makes time purposeless. The Holy Spirit has no need of time when it has served his purpose. Now he waits but that one instant more for God to take his final step. And time has disappeared, taking perception with it as it goes, and leaving but the truth to be itself. That instant is our goal, for it contains the memory of God. And as we look upon a world forgiven, it is He who calls to us and comes to take us home, reminding us of our identity, which our forgiveness has restored to us. Okay, and I, I just, you know, I, I, I wanted you all a couple things before we read this last section. Uh, one more time, our, our, our reading for today, the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Um, one thing is that uh, I, I thank you so much for joining me. I, I really do appreciate you tuning in and, and, and going through the course with me, um, listening to my comments about it. Uh, but mainly just hearing Jesus speak. And I, I wanted you to, to kind of know that um, a, a lot of this, um, the way I try to present this is a way that it would work really good right before you go to have one of your extended periods of meditation or even just short period of meditation. I try to always end with the lesson so that it's really fresh in your mind and be an excellent time to be still and quiet and let it kind of soak in. And I usually keep my card right in front of me, particularly in the morning when it's you know fresh. In the evening, it, you've been saying it all day, so it's you, know, you pretty much don't need your card. But in the morning, I either leave your book open in front of you so you can peek occasionally if you forget exactly what your little mantra for the moment is. Uh, today, the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. So anyway, I hope this becomes kind of a, a devotional for, for you, that uh, it can be a, a meaningful part of your, your, uh, your, your, your quiet time, where you, you take a little time of, of learning and then a little time of, of quiet uh, soaking in God's Word. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. The Holy Spirit needs my voice today, that all the world may listen to your voice and hear your word through me. I am resolved to let you speak through me, for I would use no words but yours and have no thoughts which are apart from yours, for only yours are true. I would be savior to the world I made, for having damned it, I would set it free. That I, may find, that I may find escape and hear the word your holy voice will speak to me today. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. We teach today what we would learn, and that alone.
We teach today what we would learn, and that alone. And so our learning goal becomes on unconflicted, an unconflicted one and possible of easy reach and quick accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, you're teaching what you want to learn. And you and you learn. I, I, the way I like to look at it is well, I, I can't contain myself anyway. It's so exciting. I want to share it. That's why I do these, these videos. <laughs> we teach today what we would learn and that alone. And so our learning goal becomes unconf an unconflicted one and possible of easy reach and quick accomplishment. How gladly does the Holy Spirit come to rescue us from hell when we allow his teaching to persuade the world through us to seek and find the easy path to God. And I would put that easy path to God all in one word, forgiveness. Of course, you got to understand what forgiveness means. It means recognizing what is not real is really not real, <laughs> no matter how much in the dream it seems real. Okay, the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Thank you all so much for joining me. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today.